Hello everybody and welcome to something a little different. We will be attempting an experiment here in Dynasty mode in NCAA 14. As you can see, every single team is one star prestige and rated as low as possible. What I've done is I've nerfed every single school. All of their players are rated as low as I could rate them. The coaches are all rated as low as possible and the coaches philosophies are all the same. Every coach in the country is going to be using the same playbook and the same uh, offensive styles, aggression, all that. It's all set to the same. And the schools all have the same recruiting ratings, so things like campus lifestyle, all that, are all as low as possible. Here are the players, and as you can see, they are all rated 1. I could have done 0, but I was having some issues when I was editing the file, so I just did 1. I have no problems with that now. Um, except for stamina and injury, I've put it 99, so that they're at least able to play and not getting injured all the time. I, wa I wanted some consistent results instead of just injuries all over the place. Um, so yeah, every single team, every single player is a freshman and absolutely awful. This is college football Armageddon. It's it's the end here, guys. This is going to be the worst thing you've ever seen in your life. And we're going to see exactly how bad it's going to get because this is the death of college football. The simulation, as you can see the game is already, we haven't even started, the game's already saying not very good, it's just gonna be, it already knows it's gonna be bad. So here we go with the magic of editing, we jump ahead to conference championship week and we're gonna start looking at some results here and, and <laughs> see what actually happened. Uh, before we get into that, we're gonna look at week one. What happened to week one? Oh, oh dear. Oh dear. FCS teams are dropping hundreds of points on FBS teams and in the games between the FBS teams they're scoreless in regulation and they're having to win on field goals in overtime. <laughs> here I'm just I'm looking is there any two nothing games in here? Oh, we found it. First quarter safety Nebraska wins. Imagine being at this game and the only score is a first quarter safety. Unbelievable. <laughs> Looking at the uh, conference title matchups. Oh, just look at the team ratings. F, just magical. Fs, Fs for everybody. This is the college football. <laughs> this is this is reality now. This is Missouri versus Mississippi State. Sure, for the SEC title, just just like real life. <laughs> Mississippi State is the number three team in the country right now. Colorado State, Hawaii in the Mountain West, Cal, Arizona State in the Pac-12, Syracuse, North Carolina in the ACC, Illinois in the Big Ten Championship, Illinois, Ball State in Ohio, I feel like that would actually not be too far from reality. But now we're going to check in on the results of those championship games along with uh, everything else. We're getting simming to the end of the season. We're going to look at the stats, the awards, all that stuff because I want to see exactly how ridiculous this experiment can be. See how it affects... Oh! I was going to say see how it affects the simulation engine. We've already seen a, a big factor here is that the Heisman winner is a strong safety from Cal, and in fact, all the Heisman finalists are defensive players. Unbelievable. <laughs> look at these, look at the scores. Rice and Marshall was the only conference championship game, oh, and Illinois and Penn State, so two no, three. I, I'm misreading, but most of these conference championship games went to overtime. Illinois, Lovey Smith, The Beard, got it done. Big Ten champions. <laughs> Believe Lovey Smith, you can, you can make it a reality if everybody in college football is absolutely awful. Take a look at the top 25 and just bask in this glory here. Look at the records. 
Oklahoma State, 10-3, and three, number one in the country. <laughs> San Jose State is the number three team in the country, a 9-4 and four record. And they're number three. Arizona State, Utah, Notre Dame, Oregon State. I got it. I mean, Western Kentucky, number 10, 9 and 4 record. Hawaii, Penn State. Buckeyes. Uh, Washington is went from 25 to 15, and they're 5 and 7. I think we might have broke the game. <laughs> Rice is in the top 25. All it took was everybody else being just as bad as Rice to get the job done. Who would have thunk it? Look at the uh, conference records here. See see how things shook out. And, and as you can see, uh, NC State 1-11. That's pretty bad. But there's not a lot of variation in the records. Um, especially the conference records. They're super competitive because, of course, all the teams are the same. Um, so I, I'm very interested. I'd, I'd like to know like what calculations are going on in the simulation engine when all factors are equal. What's going on that's causing you know Connecticut to win eight games and Cincinnati to win just two games? You know where's the line and like it's just flipping a coin at this point. Is that what it's doing? I mean, it, look at this division. Unbelievable. Six to eight wins for every single team. Big 12, Oklahoma State at the top, of course. Texas and Kansas are equal. Get your memes out. Texas and Kansas are equal, and it's not good. Some things uh, never change. Rutgers still at the bottom of the Big Ten East, so even when everybody else is terrible, Rutgers is still among the terriblest. But, you know, Illinois and Purdue... Meanwhile, are the top dogs in the Big Ten West, just as you know, just like real life, obviously. Uh, look at this. I mean, again, there's 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 not much difference between the teams. I mean, UAB and UTSA. That's pretty embarrassing, but there's just not much between them. It's very interesting, especially you look at like the conference and division records. I'm I'm wondering about the tiebreakers for some of these because there's a lot of teams with like the same records so I'm I'm curious about how the game calculated the tiebreakers but we'll probably never know that for real I'd have to do some deep digging on that one Oh yeah San Jose State number 3 in the country but somehow finishing uh second in their division I guess pretty strange Oregon State Top of the Pac-12 North, but again, a very close, hard-fought division. Arizona State, number one in the South. And look at this. Look at the SEC East. is just a mess. Imagine, like, following this season, like, if that actually happened. Arkansas, just like Rutgers, just, they can't, I mean, Arkansas are absolutely terrible. Rutgers at least won some games, but... You know, some teams that just doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Real life video games, they're just terrible no matter what. So there you go. Check out some All-Americans just to see uh, kind of who were the best players, you know. It's, it's rather odd because everybody's the same. So how does, you know, how, how do these players get better than the others? Like what, what do they do? That's gonna make them better. That's that's what I'm wondering. Um, a lot of Mississippi State, a lot of Penn States, Penn State's all over the place on these All-American teams. Um, the freshman All-American team is obviously gonna be the same as the first team All-Americans because everybody's a freshman. So, <laughs> as you can see there, pretty crazy. Not surprising. It's just it's a funny uh, byproduct of this experiment. Now look at the award winners, the Maxwell Award, the top three guys, and in fact, six of the top seven are Penn State players, and two Penn State quarterbacks in the finalists for that award. What even is going on? Uh, the receiver here, who also won the Bolitnikoff Award, has one receiving touchdown. And he's the nation, apparently, 
the nation's best receiver, according to uh, best offensive player, really, according to these awards. Walter Camp, Penn State again, running back here, also won the Doak Walker Award. So he had zero rushing touchdowns, and he's an award winner. I mean, that show, that's, that's the state of college football now. See, you don't even have to score touchdowns to win awards. It's just simply existing will win you an award. Strong safety is apparently the new uh, top position in college football. Look at these safeties all over the place. That's, that's where you want to be. <laughs> Here's the Heisman winner, Nagurski and Thorpe Award winner as well. 34 tackles for a loss, 10.5 sacks, 5 interceptions, 14 pass deflections. I mean, all things considered, pretty pretty good. You know, I mean, he was going up against terrible offenses, but he's also terrible. So, you know, it's just, it's all bad. But he's the best of the bad. He won the Heisman. He is the best of the worst. Strong safety number five for California. Mark it down. Penn State's quarterback back at it again <laughs> in the backup or whatever the other quarterback at Penn State also in there. <laughs> he threw one touchdown, 23 times sacked. Remarkable. This is amazing. Absolutely. Look at the Penn State just the tight end. Penn State just raking in the awards. What, what makes Penn State better than anybody else look at all these awards they're winning finally maryland <laughs> maryland defensive tackle breaks up the streak but that trophy case of penn state's getting pretty full from this god-awful season what in the simulation engine made them better and look at this the lou groza award winner awful kicker every kicker bad this guy went 11 of 13 and kicked a 39 yarder as his longest. And he's disgustingly bad. Like, that's amazing. So, I, I don't know. It must be something in the simulation engine that. I don't know. I really don't. You know, look at the Ray Guy Award winner here 176 punts. 176 punts? Almost 6,000 total punt yards. That's how bad the offenses were. Oh, God. Oh, here's the bowl results. Uh, nothing really shocking about the scores. We got a 3-2 to two game. Wake Forest over Toledo in the military bowl. <laughs> I don't, like, I don't even have much words for this right now. It's incredible. Rice beat Alabama in the Liberty Bowl. Imagine Rice beating Alabama in real life right now. <laughs> Imagine. I can't. I can't. I, I can't. The Rose Bowl. I, I took away the uh, bowl tie-ins. And the Rose Bowl still ended up with a Big Ten versus Pac-12 matchup. So that's interesting. Uh, Arizona State over Colorado State in the Fiesta. San Jose State won the Sugar Bowl. That's why they're number three. North Carolina over Mississippi State in the Orange Bowl. Baylor over LSU in the Cotton and Oklahoma State, in a high-scoring affair, beat Notre Dame in the national championship 6-3. to three, And all the points were scored in overtime. Of course they were. Imagine going to that championship game. Oh, God. Notre Dame had 77 yards of total offense. <gasps> Look at the third down conversions. They went a combined 2 for 43 on third downs. They both punted it 18 times for 31 yards. That's interesting. Average of 31 yards. Here's the team stats. And uh, the game didn't load the individual offense stats. The offenses were so bad, the game couldn't even be bothered to load. Like, it just said, th these, are, these stats are too bad. I'm not even going to show you them. It, the game couldn't be bothered to load the offensive stats for the individual players because they were so embarrassing. But we do have season stats for the individual players. 
And this is where things get a little interesting. Because, uh, hoo -wee. We got some bad, bad numbers. Leading passer, Idaho's quarterback, 1133 total yards. Uh, Arkansas's quarterback, hilariously bad. But only eight quarterbacks threw touchdown passes. And they all it was all just one. Nobody threw more than one touchdown pass. Meanwhile, just about every quarterback threw multiple interceptions and in most cases double digit interceptions, which is hilarious. Just speechless. Nobody completed more than fifty percent. And Arkansas again at the bottom. <laughs> Yards per completion. Must be throwing a lot of screens or something. Five yards is the highest. Um, interesting. The longest play in all of college football were three times it happened of 25 yards on a passing play. Nobody had a play in college football this season longer than 25 yards. Actually incredible. And Cal's poor quarterback got sacked 52 times leading the country. <laughs> so sorry <laughs> I'm so sorry <laughs> oh look at these rushing stats the leading rusher Penn State's halfback 296 yards averaging two yards a carry devastating absolutely devastating nobody had more than two yard two rushing touchdowns and here this next stat is crazy Longest run, six yards. Nobody had a running play longer than six yards this season. Just impossible. And then no yards after contact. No yak. No broken tackles. Which means every time in a running play somebody got hit, they went down. Nobody broke a tackle. <laughs> it's just like you breathe on them and they just fall over. Incredible. Receiving numbers aren't like aren't terrible they're not really good but like this running back had 50 catches probably a lot of again probably a lot of screen plays you know something stupid like that but then you have only three receivers with receiving touchdowns yet there were eight quarterbacks with passing touchdowns so i don't understand like I, i'm genuinely concerned the stats just broke like the game when it came to offensive stats the game just said nope you know these are so terrible i can't even i can't even be bothered to show them they're they're just bad i don't know Some, something we we definitely m messed with something in the system it couldn't handle it which is fascinating um look at these i mean the defensive stats are absurd S strong safeties for some reason are the best players in college football now this is uh, the new reality. Embrace it. Um, I tried to load fumble recoveries, but it just gave me this error. Same with the fumble yardage. I tried to find stats on it. It just said for I, again. The game is just like I, I can't, can't do it. Lots of safeties, all that kind of stuff. Kicking. At least the best kickers here, which still isn't very good, but like, thirteen of twenty-two. 12 of 18, like, these are some good percentages for garbage kickers. The award winner did that, but look at the bad kickers here. This is 1 of 14, 2 of 17, 4 of 23, just disgustingly bad kicking. So for the most part, it was awful, but there were some, for some reason, some kickers that succeeded. And then, you look at the longest field goals that were kicked... Generally around 36 to 39 is where it seems to be sitting, but there were a couple dudes that got over 40, and this guy that kicked the longest field goal, I checked his stats and his extra point percentage is nan. Again, the game's just like, I don't care, nan. You want your extra point percentages? Nan. Now the moment you've all been waiting for. <laughs> the, the punting stats. 202 punts is the most by Marshall's punter. 202 punts. Alabama's poor punter had four of them blocked. Look at all these punts down inside the 20. Look at this. 53, 53, 52, 51, 
so on and so forth. Punter's dream in this this life now, this reality. Uh, kick returns, every single kick return, every single one was 12 yards. There was no variation, not one. Punt returns, not one. I guess everybody was fair catching or just getting immediately destroyed because there were no punt returns. <laughs> Absolutely incredible. A uh, brief look at some team stats here. The leading points per game is SMU three. Oh, sorry, a whopping 3.8 points per game. Seems like basically if you could kick a field goal, you had a pretty good chance of winning. So if you're averaging three points per game or higher, you're doing pretty good. Look at all these teams with passing touchdowns, though, and then if you look at the stats for the quarterbacks and the receivers, like, it doesn't match up. So, again, something is off with the way stats were tracked here, which is interesting. Uh, the defensive stats were a bit skewed because, like, Penn State, North Carolina had very low numbers, obviously, but if you played an FCS team, your stats were skewed because that team was so much better than you. And if you played, like, UAB played two FCS teams, so their stats are all jacked up. ODU, two FCS teams. So, look like, their stats are all messed up. Uh, Louisiana led the country with 65 sacks. It's pretty crazy. Uh, the conversion rates are hilariously bad. Best third down percentage is Idaho with 22 and North Carolina as well. But look at the attempts. Everybody's got well north of 200, if not more than 300 third down attempts. <laughs> and they're only converting not even a fourth of that. Recruiting. Oh, boy. Again, as I said before, I made all the recruiting stats equal as well. And what's interesting is look at the top 10. It's all teams that start with S or T. And that's a pretty weird coincidence. So I think just something in the system, like it said, okay, every, like everybody's the same. So I'm just going to like find these random teams that are going to, I don't even, I can't even describe it. Like you, you can hear it in my voice. I can't like process this. Because it's just weird. Like, the game doesn't really know what to do. Um, so, Temple got the top recruit in the country. But if you look, some of these guys weren't even recruited. Uh, the number two, three, four, seven recruits. Not even, look at their lock percentages. 2%, 9%, 2%, 9%. They, like, they weren't even recruited by anybody. And maybe they weren't interested because everybody's stats were so bad. Who went, like, every single school's campus lifestyle is the lowest rating possible. Who wants to live on any of these campuses, according to the game, you know? A lot of four stars. I noticed there were a lot of four stars that didn't get recruited at all. At all. Like, look at these quarterbacks. The top quarterbacks ain't going nowhere. <laughs> look at this. No four-star quarterbacks got recruited. The best one is this Bailey dude. So Rutgers, congratulations, you got the best quarterback in the class. <laughs> it's, it's incredible. Um, I noticed, and part of it might be also that the offenses were so bad that the recruits, like, don't even want to play. Like, they don't want to even go anywhere because the offenses are so bad. So that could have been, but like receivers and stuff, you know, were recruited pretty well. I don't know. It's really interesting South Alabama got the top two receivers in the class so watch out you know if they could have a quarterback who but obviously all these recruits are going to be the best players in the country next year uh, they're going to be immediate starters by far even the lowest rated recruits um, so if you want to see season two let me know give me feedback like it if you enjoyed all that stuff it'll help me out greatly um, if you want to follow me on Twitter, I am at the Jammer1031. Talk to me there. And I also started up a Patreon page if you want to support me in my future content and helping get this channel off the ground. Uh, be very much appreciated. Thank you guys so much for watching. I will see you all next time.